So let us give the floor to Ifemia. Um, I wish all of you to gather and please ask your questions if you have any. Ifemia is ready to give all to respond as thank you very much. Ifemia, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Clementine, and hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be leading you through the dashboard section for today. And uh, apologies, um, I won't be uh, putting my camera on because of I'm um, having some unreliable uh, internet connectivity problems. It's okay. Yeah. yeah, great. So uh, today uh, we are going to be learning how to create just um, a dashboard in a simple way. And um, um, is someone speaking or I don't know, I'm hearing some noise in the background. Do I continue? Yes, we have to continue and we ask everyone to switch on to unmute, to mute, sorry, because we have to let Ifemia only speak. Yeah. Clementine, let me know when I can proceed. Hello? Yeah, I saw yeah, I saw that you you can you can feel because I and I I asked everyone to to switch on. Okay. His, yeah. Cool. Cool. So, yeah, let me uh quickly share my screen as we move along the training. Can you see my screen? Not yet, but it's coming. Can you see now? Me, not yet. Okay, hold on, let's see. Why? Can you see? I don't know if you have us. I still have to see it. From my side, it, it, it is not coming. Can anyone see it? Yes, Ah, some people can see. Great, I yeah. see Thomas can see, good. So um, this is exactly how the dashboard um, interface looks like. And um, the reason for creating the dashboard is a way to help local organizers or people who are organizing any campaign, any program to be able to track uh, the people who are participating in that um, program or campaign, uh, their contributions from a particular time to a, a, a particular time. And also the Wikimedia projects they are uh, contributing to on that program or campaign, whether it is Wikipedia or Wikimedia Commons or Wikidata or we keep quote whatever um project it is your uh campaign or program is addressing or even the language uh wikipedia you want to um contribute to or even the uh, maybe if it's a project that is still in the incubator so um so because i can't see any more interesting okay let me stop and start again and see what happens Yeah, some see the, your presentation, others don't see. I don't know. I meet with, I can't see your, your presentation. And some of us don't see also. Yeah, let me yeah. try it again and see if if this will be helpful. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to try again to see. Thank you. 
Can you see? Yes, now. Yeah, now we can see it. Okay. Perfect. So um, I'm just going to repeat my earlier um, comments. Yeah. So I was saying this is like how the Outreach dashboard interface looks like. And the reason why we use this is a way of helping community organizers to track their participants, contributions, the timeline of that um, contribution that is happening, what kind of Wikimedia projects that that program or that co campaign is contributing to. Is it, for example, Wikipedia or Wikidata or Wikiquote, Wikimedia Commons, what have you, or even a combination of all of this, or even if maybe the Wikimedia project is in the incubator and you need to track contributions to it. So this is more like helping organizers to make their work easy, because imagine maybe doing it manually and you use, for example, a sheet of paper and you start putting this down somewhere or you even put it on a dock. It's going to be a very uh, strenuous and voluminous activity for anyone to do especially uh, in a large scale uh, event. So this is like the major role uh, the dashboard plays. This does not mean that this is the only um, um, tool that is used in tracking this, but this is like the um, popular one when it comes to the Wikimedia movement that organizers use in tracking their events. And in order to create one, um, one thing I also have to mention is that in the Wikimedia movement, the, the, the amazing thing is that there are different ways of doing a particular thing, right? And what matters some of the time is um, using the method that is most appealing and convenient for you. So, in order to create uh, a dashboard, let me go back. You cannot see my uh, screen, right? Yeah, I'll see it. Can you go Great. On? So one of the ways um, I normally myself, uh, when I want to create uh, a, an outreach dashboard, one of the easy way I do this is just coming to Google and typing uh, Wikimedia outreach dashboard. Right. And then it pops up with several uh, search results. And then the first one here is the outreach um, dashboard link where we have the programs and events dashboard. And I just click on it and it brings me right to this. Now, other people might decide to say maybe for them, they don't want to maybe go to the Google search and maybe they just want to, they have maybe the URL or the um, web address uh, offhead and they want to just quickly type it and launch into it, whatever works for you, right? But I'm also sharing like some of the ways I and other people uh, do um, launching into the um, dashboard once we want to create any dashboard. So now I am on the dashboard and what you can see here, we have some tabs uh, on top here, we can see the find programs dashboard. We can see my dashboard tab. We can see training, documentation, and report a problem. And also mentioning that once you are going to um, do anything on this dashboard, the first step, like when you're creating an article or whatever it is you are doing, is to sign in first. And in this case, I'm already signed in in order to uh, carry on with the editing that I need to make. Um, um, while we are going through this, if you have any confusion, if you have any questions and you don't want it to escape your memory, feel free to put this in the chat. And uh, while we uh, proceed with the uh, section and then we'll come to the question and answer section where you can ask me all of your questions. Yeah, where I can answer them. 
So now I am saying what we are seeing here is all of or most of the programs that I have created or participated in, right? And this is what my dashboard tab shows. But now uh, we want to create um, our own um, dashboard for our event. So in creating um, in creating a dashboard, there are two questions you need to answer before you can create a dashboard. You need to ask, for example, is it a dashboard for maybe a campaign that has uh, local events in different countries or communities running? Or is it just a dashboard for a singular program that is happening only in one community? So if it's, for example, a dashboard that needs to, uh, for a, a program or a campaign that is happening in multiple places or countries, the best thing for you to create is what is called a central dashboard. When you now create the central dashboard, you can now take that central dashboard link and share with the communities who are participating in that uh, event to create their own program dashboard on the central dashboard. And if you want to create a central dashboard, for example, the step you take is coming to the Find Programs uh, tab, which I'm going to click on here. And then once we click on here, we see that the what we are seeing on the dashboard has changed. We can see that we have different kinds of previous campaigns that have been run or maybe currently running on that are showing on my dashboard. And um, for you to create your own campaign dashboard, you have to scroll down and come to where we see create a new campaign. So once I click on that tab, I see that I have a pop-up window um, that is showing me some of the information I need to uh, put in in order to create my own dashboard. So the first thing you want to do when you are on this window is to put the title of um, um, the campaign you are running. For example, um, I can decide to put this audiovisuals of Ibu Dances contest, for example. And then um, as the title of my campaign, or better still, let's just use, uh, I think, the name of the current campaign that is running, Africa Environment um, Day 2023, for example. And then the next thing you now need to look at is um, whether you want uh, this program to be passworded or not. In most instances, it's advised that you do not um, um, put a password on the dashboard because that could also create some kind of difficulty for people to join. Other times, it's also um, maybe... Um, better for you to consider uh, placing a password on it. It depends on a number of reasons. Uh, one of them being that, for example, the level of um, uh, digital literacy of the people who are attending your event, or maybe uh, the level of knowledge of people who are attending your event. For some people, placing the passcode sometimes makes it easy for people to find difficulty in in joining. Other times, maybe it also, like I mentioned, depends on your audience, on each of events you're running. If you feel like a password, for example, should provide some kind of security you need, then you feel free to put um, the password. But most of the local events I've seen uh, people run, uh, especially in the African continent, most of the time it does not have a, a passcode so that people can find it easy to join. Then, because for example, you did not want a passcode, we see that the, the 
option for that is already um, selected. In case, um, so that will be it for that. Then the next uh, thing around this, the next um, question around if you want to use a start and end date. So when running this, it's always very important that you have a start and end date because most of the campaign we run in the movement are always um, with a start date and an end date. So once you choose this option, what this will mean is that contributions will only be tracked from that time you have specified to the time you are saying that once it gets to this time, no other thing should be tracked uh, from people who are contributing. So because you want to use a start and end date, you have to select this as well. And then once you uh, select this, we see that we now have the box to fill in what dates uh, we want this to start tracking and then what end date we want this to stop happening. So the next one we see here is also your description. You need to like provide maybe uh, just a paragraph or a sentence or two about what the campaign is all about. Then once you define that, for example, uh, you put it on this box. Uh, let's say for example, um, Africa Environment Day 2023 um, is a campaign that seeks to improve the coverage of environment related topics on Wikimedia, on Wikimedia projects, on Wikimedia projects in Africa, in Africa and about Africa, for example. So this could be your description. It could be this short, it could be this long, depending on um, what you are running and what you want our people to know about the project you're running. And then we have um, the default, uh, sorry, default cost type. So uh, we cannot choose a basic cost, for example, because this is, we're not running a cost and we want to um, maybe track people's participation over a particular time and several iterations. So we're, we're not using a cost or a basic cost option. Another one is the article scoped program. This could be when maybe you have already certain articles that you want contributions to be tracked on. So what this means is that if it's not those particular articles that people are contributing to, you don't want to track any other article as, uh, outside of that. But when you want any article that is related to the theme of your campaign to be tracked, then most of the time, the best option that people go for is the editathon, right? So what this means is that whatever article that is related to this will be tracked, even though it also have its downside, because what this also means is that if you are going to give out prizes, or it's a, a contest, for example, and you have people contributing to several um, articles, but you have also like made a contest rule that says only those who contribute to uh, the topic that is related to the campaign will be awarded prizes. So in this instance, after creating this, you will have to do an extra job to go through this um, dashboard to look at people's contribution, for example, to know those who truly contributed to the to articles that are related to the theme of the campaign. Because sometimes, for example, 
from the team of what we have on the dashboard now relating to environment, you could see people who you know contribute to ones relating to politics or even relating to maybe um um let's say gender. Yeah, I, I think gender also have an intersection with environment, let's say politics or even other things that are not relating to environment. So you want to also take that extra time to go through them and ensure that people who or articles that are being worked on are also the ones relating to your team. So once we put this here, the next thing we are going to click on is the create my campaign button. But I'm not going to click on this because once I click on it, it's going to be created. And we are using this only for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to cancel and then use a created one to show you how the um, interface will look like once you have created this. So I'm canceling and then um, I'm going to find the one for a campaign that I'm helping to run the Wiki for Human Rights to show you how the interface will look like. So once you create this, um, aside from what we have on CNC's program, 65 editors, um, how many words are there than all of it, because you created a new one, all of these things will be vacant. But where I want to draw your attention to is where we now have create program um, create program and the edit button because once you finish creating this you're going to see this button uh, the the create program button so what this um, button will serve is for people who are now participating in this campaign to go in and create their own program dashboard that program dashboard could now be for that um, local activities for the campaign in a particular country, in a particular community. For example, the Africa Environment Day that is being run at the African region. And then Rwanda, for example, wants to participate and wants to create a program dashboard that will be connected to the central or regional dashboard of the campaign, they will have to come to where we have the create program to click on it. So once we click on it, what we are now going to see is create new program, clone previous program. So what we want to do is creating a new program. What this clone previous program is, is more like you want to create uh, a dashboard for a previous program that have already run. So like when you like choose that option, what this might do is more like trying to um, copy or duplicate uh, information from that into the new one you want to create. But that is not what we want to do. What we want to do is to create a new program. So once I click on create new program, it's going to ask that question we have also answered when we are trying to create the central one, whether this is a basic program or course that we are running, or is it in an editathon or an article scoped program? And I have explained uh, some kind of insight to um, the difference between the theory and the, the convenient one that most of the people work with uh, most of the time is the editathon. So I'm going to create, uh, sorry, click on editathon. And then this is what we have. So it's going to ask us again. Um, it's going to ask us again, for example, what is the program title? What institution is um, leading this? Like I mentioned, if this is being led by Wikimedia uh, Rwanda, that institution here will now be Wikimedia Rwanda as the institution. And then the program title, if it's plugging into the regional um, dashboard, instead of saying, for example, Africa Environment Day, 
2023. We now write Africa Environment Day 2023 in Rwanda. That way, people know that this program is for the Rwandan community, for example. Or maybe if it's not a country, but maybe an organization who wants to participate in this. Maybe we can now say maybe Africa Environment Day 2023 uh, at Open Foundation West Africa, for example, uh, as the uh, organization in this. Then institution, we still put the name of that institution there. Um, then we come to where we have Home Wiki, right? Um, and also have the one we have as Tracked Wikis. The most important one you need to pay close attention to is the track wikis, because whatever you select here will be uh, where contributions will be. Recording in progress. And how you can work together. And you have amazing um, training. People have been working out in the uh, Is someone speaking? I think I'm lost. Money, money, money. Would you please? Yes. If you can, you can go on. It's okay. okay. Good. Great. Thank you. So, um, as I was speaking, the one we need to pay very close attention to is the track wikis, because whatever project you are going to. Uh, put here will only be where contributions of participants will be tracked. For example, if you're, you want participants to contribute to Wikidata only, for example, and then here you didn't put Wikidata, for example, no matter how participants register on the dashboard or maybe you register them on the dashboard, no contributions on Wikidata will be tracked. Or maybe you want them to contribute only to Wikipedia. And then in the tracked wikis, you have only Wikidata or you have Wikidata instead of Wikipedia. So this is where you will get confused that people will be contributing, but the dashboard will be reading nothing because you are not tracking the particular wikis where this is happening. So this is very important for you to pay uh, close attention to whenever you are creating this. So now, for example, we have English Wikipedia already there. If you have, for example, you want to do for other uh, projects, you just have to, hold on a second, you just have to type this. So once we type Wiki, for example, we see Wikidata here, we can choose Wikidata here, for example. And then maybe we also want to, track projects that are still in the incubator. We see incubator, for example, uh, wikimedia.org. Or if we want commons, for example, we also see commons Wikimedia and we put this. If it's wiki quotes, for example, then we also have our wiki quotes. If we now also want to like track specific languages uh, relating to, uh, what is it called? Uh, relating to, uh, Wikipedia, uh, other Wikipedia languages aside from English. We can also put that as well. Uh, for example, if we want to track for Kiaranda, for example, what is also important here is for you to know the language code of your language. Very important again, because every language, uh, when it comes to the, uh, sorry, the dashboard have, uh, the code for them. For example, if it's relating to Igbo, for example, the code is IG. So you see, once I typed IG, we have this already. I'm trying to remember for Kiaranda if it's KW. I'm not sure, but there's a KW here. It could be. And then we click on it. So as many as the languages, the projects you want to track, you need to select it here while you are creating this. Then um, you um, come to where we have the program distribution and then 
uh, you put in a short description of your program again here so people can at least have an idea of what or how this is being run in your community or what the program is all about. And then when we have the private program, viewable only by admins and facilitators, most of the time people don't take this because they also want the uh, program not to be uh, viewed only by admins or facilitators, but also by people who are participating in it. So this box, usually people don't check it, except you see where you need it. Then once we finish on this row, uh, we are going to go to the button next. So because I didn't put these options, you see how important this is, showing me that I cannot progress to the next stage, except I have things put in there. So I'm going to put uh, institution uh, Wikimedia Rwanda, for example, and then in the program uh, disc description, for us to move forward, I'm just going to put letters here, hoping that works though, uh, but let's see. So yes, that was just for the purpose of um, progressing to the next stage. Um, so now another thing is going to ask you is, um, when do you want your program, when do you want this dashboard to start tracking? And when do you want it to stop tracking the activity you are doing? There is also a, 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 another one that says separate um, event start and end dates. So this is also another one. So what this is asking, for example, what time you want this to, to start um, tracking people's activities. For example, do you want this to be um, on the day of the, the event you are running? And then if it's on that day, when would that tracking end for the end date? Is it going to be, if, for example, if it's a two weeks training or contest or editathon, then um, you want to make sure that maybe you want to put it when you know this will start on that particular day and then when it will end. Or it could be that maybe uh, there are other activities that are also happening in between, for example, that you would also love the dashboard to track, for example. It could be that maybe for the campaign you are running in your community, for example. It could be that in between you are also hosting a training uh, to have participants learn how to contribute to um, the, the campaign through various Wikimedia projects, just like we're having this section. And maybe in that event, they are going to, there is going to be like a live uh, section editing or demonstration or practice where people need to like do like small live edits to really check if uh, what, they are, uh, what is being taught is clear, or maybe whoever is doing that training will also be doing live edits to, um, for participants. So for example, in that um, situation, you now want to ask yourself if those small edits from those kind of training, which is also like a sub-component of your um, activity to also be tracked. So if that training, for example, is happening before um, the start of the main community events, then maybe you now ask yourself whether you want to put the date of the start of the training into the main community events, or you just want the, only the community events to be tracked. So this is how you can think around answering the start of the activity tracking or the end of the activity tracking. Then another question is also where we have the separate um, event start and end times, which has already been stipulated here that is optional. You don't have to answer it. But how uh, this is also answered or why uh, this question is also asked is, if you would like, for example, your start dates, uh, sorry, at start uh, activity tracking dates to be the same as your event, if it's the same, sorry, if the start of your activity tracking dates 
is the same as your event starts and end date, then it might not make sense for you to maybe answer this again. What this will mean is that if you just answer only the activity tracking dates, it will be used as the same one as your event starts and end dates. But if you're saying, for example, that your start um, activity tracking dates are different from your event start and end dates, and maybe you also want to fill that uh, um, box for it, then go on and fill, fill that according to how it serves your need. So once we finish filling this and click on create my program, this will automatically be created, but I'm not creating this because we are only using this for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to go back to show you how a program dashboard now looks like when you see it here. So for me to show you, I'm, I'm using this So for me to show you, I'm using this central dashboard for us to also You can't hear you, Ifemia. Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Sorry about that. So I'm going to use this one to show you um, an example of how the program dashboard looks like or can look like. So this is the central dashboard of a campaign I have shared earlier that shows um, that shows um, um, where you will create your program dashboard for a central campaign or a global campaign or, yeah. So now you see it also has different tabs of uh, the home tab, which is uh, currently where we are. That shows the number of programs, how many people logged in, number of weights added, and so many other things. Then we also have the programs tab. So these program tabs, I just clicked on it, is going to show us all the list of the programs or communities whose program dashboards are linked to this one, right? For example, we see we uh, give for human rights in Rwanda, Togo, Cameroon, and so many of them. So now, if we want to see for a particular community, for example, using the Wiki for Human Rights in Rwanda, I just clicked on it. So once we create that program dashboard that we were um, demonstrating on, this is exactly how it's going to look like, right? This one is just for a community. Here, we now see um, the short description about the attic, uh, sorry, about the event. And then, by the side of it, we are seeing other details of what we are filling in, what we are demonstrating, uh, things like um, um, the tracked events, sorry, the, the wiki media projects that are tracked. And yes, now I'm seeing and remembering that Kieranda is ROW. Yeah, so uh, we are seeing the tracked wikis here on, um, on this detail uh, side. We are also seeing um, the institution that are handling this. Then we are also seeing um, the um, passcode. For example, we see that passcode is empty here because they didn't make this passworded. Then um, we also see the activity tracking start date, what it reads and the time zone. And we are also seeing the activity end date. There's also another thing we are seeing down here, the campaigns. We are going to come to this to explain further as, as we progress. Then there's also another thing we are seeing here, the facilitators. So ordinarily, when you create your program dashboard, the name that is going to appear as a facilitator here 
is going to be only the name of the person who has created it. But then you will now want to add the name of the other people who are making that event with you. So you need to now collect their um, usernames and then come to that dashboard that you have created and click on edit details. Once you click on edit details, you see where we have facilitators and then the names of the people who are facilitating this. And then we see the plus icon. Once we click on this plus icon, it gives us the opportunity to add the name of someone who we want to come in here, right? So once we do this, once we put anybody's name here and then click on add editor, automatically the person gets what's added. If we also want to, for example, remove someone from the facilitator list, maybe we mistakenly um, um, added the person. Once we click here, we are also see the list of these other people who are here. Once we click on this, then the person will be automatically what removed from the dashboard. So this is how you add or remove people who are also uh, co-facilitating that event with you. Also very important because it gives people the knowledge of um, who and who is making that event. So I'm going to click cancel and then we come back here. Then um, um, on, on the dashboard as well, we see other icons as home editors, um, articles upload if you were targeting um someone speaking okay thank you so uh we we see these other tabs the home tab articles upload and activity so um if we want to for example take a look at who the editors are on the dashboard. All we need to do is just click on the editor um, tab. And then it shows us the usernames of every single person who is registered here, including their recent edits, the characters they have added uh, in numbers, uh, references they have added in numbers. And then if they had uploaded anything to Wikimedia or Commons files, it also shows us the number of uh, what they have uploaded to Wikimedia um, Commons. So on the dashboard, we are also seeing several names of people who have participated in this campaign. We also have, for example, if you know this was like where we assigned different or specific articles to people. Then where we are seeing these assigned articles, we also would have been showing us what articles was assigned to a particular person and who is working on it. And um, from there, if we want to see the articles that we, uh, sorry, people have been working on. We click on the articles tab and then we start seeing all of the titles of the articles people have worked on, uh, the characters in numbers they've added, uh, the views uh, to that article since it was first um, edited or maybe uh, recently or edited. Then, sorry, also pointing out to us that is also being tracked. And then we could scroll down to the very last of everything that have been contributed. And if we, for example, want to check in any circumstances where we need to check if that article is, um, related, is related to the team of the campaign that we are organizing or um, uh, hosting, then this is where we come to check each of the title of that Article to see which one is in that, and then that also helps us to know uh, how to um, handle that where it exists. Um, then this is this is it now. Now I have showed you how to create a central dashboard. 
I have showed you how to create uh, a program dashboard in a central dashboard. Now, when we come to this part, uh, where we are seeing campaigns, right? And then we are saying we give for human rights, right to a health environment 2023. This is showing that this is the name of the central campaign that this local campaign is plugging into or is um, related to. So for us, for example, we have seen scenarios where, I mean, it happens to most people, where you might even forget that there is a central dashboard, right? And you need to go to that central dashboard to create your, uh, create your program dashboard. But then it happened that you didn't remember going to that central dashboard where I have showed you earlier. Uh, let me go back. So what I'm saying is a bit clear. Uh, so this is the central dashboard, right? And this is the home tab. So it, it might happen that you forgot coming to where we have create program to create your dashboard here, but then you just went and created the dashboard. I'm, I'm also going to show you um, how uh, people also create their own dashboard, program dashboard that is not um, uh, for maybe a large campaign. But let's say that is what happened and you didn't remember to come here to create your program dashboard. Uh, let me go back to where we had the Wikimedia Rwanda uh, dashboard. So what you could do in that instance to link up that one you have already created to the central one is coming to this part where we have edit details. Once you click on edit details, you come down to where we have campaigns. And now you see we already we also have um, a plus icon here for you to add the name of that campaign. But in order to do this correctly, you must know the exact name of that central dashboard campaign with which it was created. Because if you don't know and you just imagine and you just type in thing, you might end up maybe having campaigns a link, but it might not be linking to the uh, correct um, central dashboard because you didn't uh, really link it up to that. So once I click here, sometimes this can also be very tricky, right? In, in, in the sense that you see, we have a pop-up window and then once I want to maybe use this uh, sidebar to like go up or down, we see that that pop-up window normally disappears, right? That is like how tricky it, it can be. So let me do this again. You see what happened. I click on it again, it comes out and then I go to the sidebar to use it and then it goes out. So what this means is that once you click here, you have to now uh, go to there immediately to check click the name of what you want. You see that with already clicking there, we're having a lot of different campaigns to coming up, popping up. So what this is, is that if you have the right name of the campaign, before you even finish typing it, or once you finish typing it, you will see that it will pop up and then you just select which one it is, right? So another thing is that sometimes it can also happen that you make a mistake of um, clicking the wrong campaign and then adding it to that wrong campaign. So once you add it to that wrong campaign, it's going to be showing in the wrong campaign that your campaign is related to that campaign, whereas it's not. And once this happens, you will not have the right to go there and remove it because you are not a facilitator on the, on, the, on the dashboard because your username being listed as a facilitator gives you certain editing rights on the dashboard, including changing things the way I'm navigating now and trying to change a lot of things. This is what a facilitator right gives you.
But if you are not a facilitator, you are just logged in as an editor. The only thing you have the power to do is to uh, add your username to the dashboard and you know uh, be registered on the dashboard. So what I'm trying to say in SS is, if you put this to the wrong uh, campaign, it means that for you to remove it, you have to go to the person who, or one of the people who are facilitators on that dashboard to tell them to help you to remove it. Or you beg them, for example, if they will be willing to add your username as a facilitator for you to now have the power to remove that. So this is like what happens when you link in like the wrong um, um, this thing there. This is one scenario, but this is how you add your uh, local uh, dashboard to the global dashboard or central dashboard. That's one scenario. Another scenario that can also happen is that um, you finish, uh, creating this here, and then you don't know how to, uh, um, no, I think you finished creating this here, yes, and you don't know how to link it to the central dashboard, right? And then you come to maybe someone who is part of the central dashboard to help you to link it to the central one, right? So for the person, to help you to link it to the central dashboard, you also need to add that person if the person is not a facilitator already. You need to add the person as a facilitator on your own local dashboard here so that the person can have that editing right to come into your dashboard and then help you add it here where we have shown earlier. So this is like basically how you add this, but don't forget, once you finish adding this here, it is very important that you go up and save here. If you finish adding down there and you don't save, then you will leave here without knowing that you haven't really added it to the central dashboard. So it's also very important that you don't forget to save. Once you finish making any form of edit, it could be adding to the central dashboard, it could be maybe adding the facilitators. It could also be um, anything at all, maybe the event and start and end dates that you want to tweak or modify or even the title, anything it could be. Always remember to hit your save button once you are done. So this is how you link to the central dashboard. Now, the, the scenario that could also happen and make uh, people not to create here, but then they go out to create just their own individual dashboard. Could be this, for example, um, where we have my dashboard. I'm clicking here. Now we see that we have these three um, buttons find the program participate in a campaign, create an independent program. What this independent program means is that you are saying your campaign or your program is not relating, is not related to any um, other program, for example. And this is the case sometimes when communities are doing the, this is what we see happen when communities are participating in global campaigns and you share the global campaign dashboard for them to create um, their community dashboard. We see most of them not remembering that there is a central one and then they go right into the this place and hit on creating this independent program to create their own program. So once you click here, this is what you're going to have. The same routine we have gone through before, but just showing you that this is where you create that doesn't help you to link up to the central dashboard. But when you create from the other place I have shown you here, it will automatically be linked 
to the central dashboard because you're creating right from it. So once you finish creating, there is no point saying you need to link up because it's already linked up. But it's only when you now uh, follow through this means that you know that when you finish, there is a linking up to do. So this is mostly how uh, the dashboard works uh, when you need to create your uh, bits, uh, central or global uh, campaign dashboard, or maybe a country uh, program dashboard that is linked to another global or central campaign, or even an independent program run by your community that is not related to any um, global or movement events. I hope this is clear and um, I'm going to I'm going to stop here to maybe entertain your questions if you have any. Please uh feel free. Maybe I don't know, uh Clementine, if you want to moderate that, but maybe if you have questions, feel free to unmute and ask or type in the chat. Yeah, Clementine, back to you. Thank you very much, Premier. It was a very, very, very an amazing session. I hope everyone catch or know what what they they are yeah, supposed to know because many of us don't know how the, this program works. Even me, I have I before held many difficult to work on this program. So the labs in the chat box we have some question. Someone asked from us. Is there a way one can create Wikipedia account for people using the dashboard? I am trying to find yeah. uh, a different Please way. Keep going. Uh, you, 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 you see the question? Yes, I can see now. Um, is there a way one can create Wikipedia account for people using the dashboard? I'm trying to find a different way for creating an account because we mostly face IP address block when we edit Wikipedia during edit that and oh okay. So um to answer that question differently, uh or before answering it directly, one thing I forgot to mention that you can use the dashboard to do. Uh let me go back to where can I go back? Let me see. Uh hold on. Yeah, so one thing I, I forgot to mention is that you can use the dashboard to add an editor. There could be an editor who doesn't know how to, you know, a new person who doesn't know how to add his username to the dashboard. As a facilitator, you also have that right or power to do that. And for you to do that, you have to come to where we have edit or remove editors. What this feature means is that you can either add people or you remove people. So if you want to add an editor, what you need to is to ask the editor their user. Name. And then once you click click on add editor, automatically that will be added to the uh, to the dashboard, right? This is like a way of adding to uh, someone to the dashboard and someone who is participating and not facilitating. So why this question came to mind, sorry, why this came to mind is because of someone's question around if you can create ad accounts. So to answer your question now, you cannot create a Wikipedia account using a dashboard. You can only add editors, help add editors to the dashboard. So the issue of IP um, block, yeah, I mean, that happens most of the time when you're running events and you want to um, help people create um, dashboards. I think for you to do that, it doesn't work from the dashboard. It works outside of the dashboard and is not also everyone who has that right. But there is a right that you can be given and it's not, it's not something that is given to everybody or yeah it's it's sort of you have to get like to a, there are certain conditions for doing that right it's just like there are certain conditions for a lot of things 
when editing Wikipedia or even any of the Wikimedia projects. For example, you know there is uh, what we call Wikipedia library, where we have like um, um, available um, uh, scholarly uh, researched papers or articles that are already being uh, paid by the foundation and made available to community people for uh, free use. But for the fact also this is the case and it's um, in the Wikimedia movement, it is not for everybody, for example, it's for people who have reached a certain number of edits, right? So the way we have that condition, for example, is also the way we have a condition for uh, um, a means for us to create diff um, so many IP, sorry, so many um, accounts for new people at the same time as in a facilitator for you to create different accounts for different people. But that is also a right that restricted to some people, maybe based on some kind of um, admin rights or contribution rights that someone who have that right and trust that you will use it well and uh, also need it can release to you for you to do this. But aside from that, we are faced with the problem of you know, getting the IP block when you are creating accounts. But I can also share a little tip for you to also look at that might help you a little not to run into such things. So, um, or maybe reduce, not that I think it will help to reduce actually. So um, most of the time this happens when maybe all the people are using one source of um, internet access, right? And we see that because that is happening, we are also like having similar IP addresses because of that particular um, occurrence. And once that happens, then we, we tend to like get a lot of the blocks happening. And um, um, aside from that too, that also happening, uh, for you to limit the possibility of this happening, instead of maybe having everybody plug into a central internet access, you can maybe um, have a way to support people to use their individual um, internet access that is just used only by them and not by everyone in the event or maybe by a minimum number of people in the event to try uh, this. Other ways, um, in, in, in the past, I've also like seen uh, people who maybe try to like um, maybe switch off their phone and like switch it on again or maybe change internet. Uh, I think the prominent one is also changing internet um, uh, network that you're using at that point in time. For example, in Nigeria where we have and like some other African countries where you have more than one internet provider, right? So maybe if you have more than one um, internet um, access, you can decide to maybe switch to the other one and see if it helps you or the person or not. But most of the time, the um, account creating and the IP block sometimes results from people using the same internet access in an event. Yeah, I don't know if this is helpful to the person who has asked this question, Thomas. I think so. he's okay. If he's not okay, he can come, come again when they ask for more clarification. Then the chat, we have another question of the great. Did you see it, Ifemia? Yeah, I think I'm reading now. Um, I'm not sure I understand Cedric's question properly. Maybe Cedric, uh, feel free to unmute yourself and maybe clarify what you're trying to ask. Put your videos also if you are Right. Maybe I'm going to stop sharing too. Uh, 
Are you listening to me? Yeah, we can hear you. Things go on. Regards to the dashboard, as you saw on the dashboard there, there is a place where they indicate the number of contests, but uh, as you saw on that uh, that dashboard, it doesn't indicate number of references. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, so, so the question you're asking is, uh, I need to share my screen too. So maybe we go back to what you saw, but the question you're trying to ask is based on what you saw on the dashboard, are there instances that will make references not to be added? Is, is this what you're asking? Cedric. Is he speaking or yeah. not? Yes, I'm speaking. Please go ahead. So this is what you saw, right? Because we saw that the references are not tracked, right? Yes. So what this means is that this, uh, all of these people might not have added any reference. If they did add a reference, the reference will be tracked, right? What this means is that they, uh, there were other um, things they had contributed to the uh, articles other than a reference, for example, right? It, it, could, it could be that maybe uh, they, maybe, it could be that maybe they um, edited this, it could be that maybe they translated and, um, yeah, I think that will be it mostly, but also, um, but also I think another thing that also happens is that, like I mentioned, if you are contributing to maybe any language Wikipedia or any project that is still in the incubator, for example, and then when you were trying to bring in, uh, uh, places where you have your tract, um, where you have your tract, uh, what is it called? Um, your tract um, wikis, for example, and you forgot to maybe bring in that uh, incubator uh, into it, 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 would, it would not track any of the contributions that are made on that. I, I don't know if this answers your uh, questions. For example, we are seeing that what, what is being tracked on this dashboard is their recent edits. It means that maybe there are other ways they have contributed other than the references. Another thing we are also seeing here is also like the upload they've made to Wikimedia Commons, some of them also being tracked for people who made that. Then what we are also seeing is like the characters the users have added to any of these articles. I, I don't know if your questions were answered, but what I can also do so that we can also explore is to, which one is this? Is to, I'm going to go to, let me find a, a dashboard for a campaign that has finished, right? that uh, we can look at their dashboard and then see if we have any of the, uh, your, your question around this, Shun, your question around references, Shun. So this campaign has finished. Let's find a country or a community that participated to look at their uh, contribution. So this can be you know, um, answered in some way. So let's see this. Then these are the articles. We are even seeing for, are you seeing what is happening in the references added uh, section? Some are totally uh, not there. Why for some like this person, we see 20, meaning that this person might have contributed with 20 uh, references in his contribution. This person we are seeing 28. Uh, and then we are seeing 11 for this um, 
sorry, not this person, rather, article, rather. It means that in that article, rather, 20 references or something was added, and then we are seeing uh, other ones here from what we can see under this, right? And then for some people, for some of the articles, it also shows that no reference was added to it, right? Also remember that it depends if that article um, is a new article that is being created. Of course, if it's a new article, it's expected that uh, references should be there. But if it's also like maybe an article that is already um, created, we are not sure if the person will have maybe any uh, new references he or she has found to add, but not adding also doesn't, it could mean that there is no references or additional references to add, or maybe the person just didn't um, focus on adding the references. I, I don't know if this has answered your question somehow. Um, I don't know who asked it, Cedric. Does that make sense to you or not? Cedric, Kelly, okay. Cedric? Cedric, does this answer your question? Okay, good. Oh, any other questions? Is there any other person who has a question? Hello. Uh, Michelle, if you can go on. Okay. Uh, sorry, I came in late. Uh, my son is not well, so I had to do one or two things first. So maybe I missed a lot. I wanted to find out about the, the dashboard. Um, I had a campaign running. Actually, it's uh, I'm training new editors. So with this uh, Africa Knowledge Initiative, I'm not so sure how to create another dashboard. As I also want the statistics for the whole project as a whole, but incorporating the Africa Knowledge Initiative. So I don't know how I saw uh, Florence sent a link for this dashboard of this particular program, am I supposed to create a campaign within it or how? Please assist. Okay, um, I think from what I, I understand, this section is recorded and Nani is saying is they are going to make the recording available to you. So you can take your time and watch the step uh, by step process because since you are just joining now, um, I'm not sure maybe summarizing this for you will help or even like starting all over again to uh, uh, no, 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 teach no. you because that could take another <laughs> no. an hour plus, but I know that recording would be a great yeah. resource for yeah. you to catch. Yeah, catch up. All right. All right. Uh, thank you so much. I hope uh, I'll, I'll get help there. Thank you. Great. Yeah. I will share you the, the record. Thank you so much. That will help. I don't know if there is. Oh, sorry. Hello? My God, I have a point. Sorry. I'm not sure um, if I think everyone is muted, but are you joining with two devices? I'm not sure what why is echoing, but yeah, we can hear you. I can go. I don't know where the call are coming from, but I, I hope you are here. You, you are the, hear me. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, I would like to, to thank you very much, Samia. You did a great job for us. I, I think there is any other person who has a, a, a question. If we have someone who has a, a question, 
these records really help us to get more um, more about the dashboard program because after I will share you the, the records. Uh, thank you very much, Noni, for you to you also because you did a good job to help us to record this event, this training. So for the persons who don't know Noni, she is a she is from Wiki in Africa. She's an admin. So she helped us very well, very much in this in this event preparation. Thank you very much, Noni. Um, thank you to everyone who managed to participate in this event. I hope this project which we are, we are working on will be very, very successful one. So please try to create your local dashboard, add your, your dashboard to the global dashboard, which Florence shared to you. So for the rest, I think, if there is no any other addition from Ifemia or any other person here, it is time to stop. If there is no any other addition, no addition from me and yeah thank you all for joining yeah thank you very much we have to, to stop by here for us we we stay in touch to the telegram group to our telegram channel and for other information we will have them through your email address for for organizers and for others i will say Communicate with you through other channel. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful night. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you for maintaining. Have a wonderful night. Thank bye. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye.